Hey, this is just going to be a quick overview of the slope blend shader, the new features that I've added to it, and its overall usefulness. So um, I have actually added a couple of new features to this shader since the last time I uh, showed it. And in addition, I have significantly optimized the code for it as well. So it's about 10 less instructions, and it has significantly more features than it used to. So um, I'm going to start by enabling it. And uh, this is the defaults that you'll get when you first turn it on. Um, obviously, it's going to depend on the asset angle and in general uh, as to what it'll look like. But um, OK, so let's start by uh, going over what has changed. So I've added a new thing here. Uh, it's slope blend angle power. Now, this won't make a lot of sense to move off of one uh, if if you're using uh, the original method of slope blend, which is calculating the vertex normals, um, but it'll make sense a little bit later. I mean, you you can adjust it to get more or less of that effect back. Um, but yeah, so uh, I'm just going to set it to one, which is going to be the default value. Um, so uh, I've added another feature in here. Uh, in this case, it's the mask power and mask threshold. So these two things are going to be really important. Um, the mask power, the, the mask I'm using is basically uh, a, a mask that I output out of uh, substance, which is where I made this moss material real quick. Um, you can use the displacement, and that's one cool thing, is if you're already using the displacement map, then you can just load that. And this can be pretty low resolution. I have it set to 2K right now because that's just... It was my height map for a while, so. Um, but yeah, so you can make it pretty cheap. And uh, so the mass power, uh, kind of like before, is uh, the, obviously the higher the, the mass power, the more the mask is going to affect things. So the ma I've changed the mass threshold to be more or less like a contrast system. So what this does is it, it'll make your blend either softer or harsher, basically. This will be really useful for blending not just moss, but really anything you want. Uh, it'll, it'll just give you more control. Okay, um, so now let's talk about uh, the next new feature I added, which is the color. Now, this is a simple addition, um, but you'll notice that it's at 0, 0, 0. So I'm not overriding the diffuse entirely. Uh, but basically what I'm doing is I'm adding a certain amount of color to it. You're, you're going to want super low values. Uh, so if I want to make it more reddish, you know, I want to keep the values pretty low. It just allows you to tint the lower areas of it a little bit more than the, the brighter areas. The darker areas will be tinted more than the lighter areas. And it kind of makes this nice effect where you can get a different colored base. Um, so yeah, you can use that. That's new. Um, and uh, in addition, I have added another new feature. It's called Slope Blend Use World Normal. Now, off of the bat, you probably will notice that you didn't seem to make much of a difference, but this is where the slope blend angle power comes in. So if you raise the angle power, you will see that it actually starts to blend things into the little details in your normal map. So essentially what I'm doing is I am calculating based on world normal for the blend instead of the vertex normal. Uh, this is uh, slightly more expensive, so I made it an option. Uh, also, depending on what you want, you may not want it to be in the tiny little details. So I figured it would be useful to include both. But uh, yeah, you'll want to have a high angle power when you're using world space normal uh, for the blend. Uh, in, in this case, I'm, I'm just going to tweak it a little bit until I like how it looks. So, I'm liking the way this is looking. I think I might just want to extend a little bit. And here comes in the next new feature that I've added. So, before you know how you kind of put it down, if you put it down too far, it just gets completely blasted with moss. And you may not want this. Um, so, basically what I've done here is I've added, uh, now if you check vertex colors, um, now you can basically paint out areas in Max or Maya. You use the vertex alpha, 
And you can paint areas that you don't want the blending to ever occur on. Obviously, I just did a quick paint in here. I, I didn't do it in any sort of detailed fashion. But uh, this can be used to really help you with that, that problem. Um, and uh, it's totally optional. And on top of that, since it's using the Vertex Alpha, you can actually include actual Vertex colors in the red, green, blue channels to tint your diffuse, for instance, to create variation. Uh, you can do that as well as this. So there's not going to be any sort of weird interaction between them. All right, so that's the new features for the slope blend shader. I will be documenting the entire process of creating the shader and creating a video tutorial on how to make this shader for yourself in HLSL for CryEngine. Thank you for watching.